Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. Happy to have you here with us today. Uh, what's going on here? We are going to have an atmospheric river, whatever that is this weekend. I, uh, I'm assuming it's lots of rain, lots of more, lots more rain because we've had a ton of it. Of course, the flowers love it. We're kind of getting ready for some sunshine, sustained sunshine here, but uh, it, that's that's what's happening here weather-wise. I hope it's really beautiful wherever you are. Um, I have a nice uh, program planned for you guys today. Uh, we're gonna do some acrylic painting. Uh, I have this uh, floral can, uh, reference photo picked out for uh, today's piece. And I've already got it up here on canvas, kind of going, kind of got started. I'll talk more about this in a moment. I am going to uh, be using this glass palette here to paint, to, mi to mix my paint. And I'm going to go with this method of uh, mixing, just using the jars, right, right out of the jars. And I'll talk uh, more about that as well. And uh, before I start painting, I thought I would share some really wonderful books that I have on flowers in art. There's so much you can do with a floral composition there, and so many ways, so many approaches, so many styles, so many flowers to paint. So it's pretty, pretty amazing. And I have done quite a lot of painting in acrylic of florals. I've done a number of different series over the years. And we'll just show the, the, the big paintings in the back. So I've done some really big uh, pieces. In These are acrylic. Uh, I think this is maybe, I think, I forget the size. I think it's four, uh, four by five. I did a bunch of large pieces like this. Um, they're kind of mixed media. They have some collage on them. They have, they have some oil stick and acrylic, lots of layers of acrylic. And I also, can you put up the one, Bryce, of the piece in my house? Yeah. I, yeah. I really love them. They make me happy to, to look at. So I have quite a few of those pieces. I have one kind of long one over my fireplace. I have the one that Bryce is showing you right now. I even have one in my bedroom. So I really, I really <laughs> like to surround myself with the, that imagery. It just makes me feel good. So I'm happy to be painting some, hopefully something along those lines for you guys today. So I'm going to go a little bit abstract, I think, be a little bit playful. I have this piece, um, this was is also hanging in my in my bedroom, uh, in, in my bathroom actually. I like acrylics for that. They're really um, sturdy pieces, so it doesn't matter if they get a lot of moisture. And this piece, I feel like it's not quite uh, cooked <laughs> in a way, but there's something about it that just makes me smile. I just really love looking at it. Uh, so I think I'm going to try to bring some of this into my my painting today. So I have I brought it out here just for that with that in mind. And I always do think it's a good idea when you're developing new work or um, developing a series of pieces that you surround yourself with little bits of what you're trying to go after. It might even be just a little section of a painting or unfinished work, um, sketches, whatever it is, so that you let that kind of sink in uh, visually, mentally, and you can get it right into your, into your work. Okay, so let's look at these books, and then I'm gonna talk about um, some acrylics a little bit more. So I love this book. <laughs> these books are so cool. Let me put this, uh, put it flat, right? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, all right, I see. This, I just love the different styles, the more botanical approach. And then abstract. Um, oh, this is Charles Birchfield. I'm a big fan of Charles Birchfield. And really interesting stuff he did. And of course, George O'Keefe. Really neat stuff. 
really zoomed in, right? So all these different kinds of approaches. This is um, Child Hessem. I love this painting. So there's so many ways you can go. Oh, and this guy, this is Martin Johnson Heed. He um, was really interested in the tropics and uh, particularly hummingbirds. He painted just so many uh, pieces with hummingbirds and tropical flowers. Yeah, th see this? This is Martin Johnson Heed. And so is this. Oh, and I want to find, here's more uh, George O'Keefe or Birchfield. Oh, this is Joseph Stella. That's right. That's a really crazy, amazing, um, surrealist kind of approach. It's a really beautiful piece. These are really interesting kind of graphic approach. Charles Jamuth. So, you know, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful subject to, to paint in any media, in any media. Here's more Martin Johnson Heed. And these other books are kind of more of the same, but this, this is a wonderful book also, Metropolitan Flowers. This book is really something else. I mean, the, <laughs> this is kind of what you think about the, the very, very traditional still life with flowers. So this is kind of a more primitive approach and a Dutch master type approach. And then just the, oh, they're so beautiful. Cezanne. You can go on. I could go on and on. And I just love looking at this stuff and letting myself be inspired and influenced. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Cool stuff. Okay. More Martin Johnson Heed. All right. Oh, and I have one more book. I, I won't show too much of this. This is this book is in French. So it's um, I'm I I don't speak French or read French, but I sure appreciate this book. It's just beautiful. Lots of traditional. I mean, and you know, if you're into or interested in getting better at doing floral painting, whether it's pastel, acrylic, just looking at this kind of work gives you ideas for backgrounds, um, you know, colors. There's something about looking at someone else's painting that r rather than a photograph, there's something about looking at a painting versus just, just our reference material that somehow gets us closer to being able to do it ourselves. Uh, so I really recommend um, looking at lots of painting, floral paintings. And this one, again, ideas for backgrounds. And um, Richard Schmidt also did some really amazing floral pieces, so I think he's a good one to look at too. So in celebration of acrylics, and uh, you know, I really, uh, when I was preparing to, to paint for you guys today, I realized how much I love <laughs> acrylics and how much I'm, because I kind of go on these, uh, um, uh, what would I say? I, I, I work in a medium for a, a block of time. It's easier to do that than to be bouncing back and forth between mediums, you know, on a daily basis. If you kind of work on, you know, I'll work for six months or three months on um, pastel a lot, and then then I'll go to watercolor or I'll go to acrylic because it's you know functionally in the studio. It's it takes some preparation to get all the materials together. Not a ton, but there's some something to that. And it, when I was getting ready yesterday and today, I was like, wow, I really just love them. And you know, you could see just doing that big stuff. Acrylic is such a fun and versatile medium. It's, it's durable. You can do mixed media with it. It is, um, it's easy cleanup, all that good stuff. All the attributes of acrylic, they're, they're so amazing, but 
and that they dry fast, okay? So all those attributes also can be things that people feel like, oh, that makes it hard. Like they seem like they're, it's hard to blend with them, right? But once you get the hang of it, yeah, there's some sort, sort of technical hurdles, and I think that's true with any medium that we're, we're doing. But um, once you get over those, to me, the sky is the limit. And uh, I have two workshops in acrylic, Seasons in Acrylic and uh, Adventures in Acrylic. Uh, and my, my whole goal with both those workshops is to make acrylics a really accessible and easy medium for my students to um, engage in because I think it's, it's not to be missed. It really isn't to be missed. And let's go over to the, the palette cam again. And I'll just show, these are some of the projects that we did in Adventures in Acrylic. So a super broad range, again, of subject matter and of styles, uh, because I wanted to present not just projects, but we, we I think that there's something like, um, I'm, I'm gonna guess, I, if memory serves, like 14 technique techniques presented, and we employed almost all of them in the projects in adventures in acrylic, because I wanted it. I wanted my students to be able to paint anything that they want in any kind of mode that they want. So this is obviously more graphic. This is more you know realistic, kind of photorealistic. This is a little bit more painterly. Again, kind of more graphic. This one is using more direct strokes. This project, we used really thin glazes and pulled um, some of the lights out. And acrylic's really, really good at that. Um, there's so much you can do with acrylics. Uh, we, we painted a bunch of uh, small things in, in uh, adventures in acrylic. And these aren't from the workshop, but I have to show them because they are so fun. These are all acrylic and all the different kinds of things that you can paint. You know, just it's just really neat. It's such a wonderful medium. And yeah, that, that, that's just a few of them. So super fun. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and Adventures in Acrylic and Seasons in Acrylic are on sale until June 21st. They're both on sale for $72. Yep, they're, yeah, they're $72. That's $77 off the regular price. So they're a really, really good deal. I'm really proud of both those workshops. I went back and you know, sometimes I forget how much we do and what we do. And I was looking at them today and I was like, oh yeah, those are really, those are really great. Um, they both have a lot of information about mixing, about techniques. And just, I think they're pretty, Pretty darn thorough. They also come with a study guide. They have Facebook groups associated with them and monthly pastel painting lessons. Um, um, subscribers, you guys get your $15 discount on, on top of the sale price. And you get that when you are logged in, you get that automatically if you get one of those workshops. So that's the skinny on the acrylic sale. And now for some acrylic painting, and that's so fun. And you know, I was uh, on the, the monthly Facebook group the other day and talking, seeing people's comments and getting in there and chatting with people. And one of the things that really strikes me about all the things that we're doing is when I say I want it to be fun, I really mean it. It should be fun. What we're doing here is something that should be bringing lots of happiness and joy and, and beauty into your life. And um, that's, that's, my, that's my main thing. And I, um, so that's good. All right, so let's talk about the palette a little bit. This is a piece of glass. It's a piece of thick glass here. And because this is from Ikea, it's a coffee table glass insert. And you can buy these at Ikea, just, just the, the, the glass. And what's good about it is it's got this nice smooth 
edge to it. It's already been taken care of. You don't have to sand it or do anything to it. And it's pretty thick. And that's a good thing for in the studio. What I did was I painted the back of the glass with um, a middle gray. So I have this nice surface to mix on. I have several different glass palettes that are all different sizes uh, because I, I, you know, I, I, sometimes I, I don't want it to take up a whole uh, big space on my table. But I like mixing on these. And then another key to acrylics is you want to have a nice spray bottle because of course you do have to, you have to keep them wet, moist. I have several big buckets of water. I have this one and I have a couple more down below. Because of the way I'm going to be mixing today, I have these guys so that I can dip into my jars and just put a, a, a amount of paint out here on my palette. And that these work out good and they're inexpensive. Yes, you have to throw them away, kind of, when, when you're done. You could let them dry and reuse them. That definitely would be an option. All right, so let's talk about the canvas a little bit. So this is a canvas that had another painting on it. <laughs> and I forget, let's see, what was it? Was it, fin I don't think it was finished. Um, something that wasn't really going anywhere. And I put several layers of white gesso on it. I think maybe four layers of kind of thinned white gesso. Uh, and then a final round of this is um, you know yellow ochre ground. Now, I picked that yellow ochre because if you'll notice in this piece, because I had this piece in mind. If you notice in this piece, see this, this, these lines, that's me scratching back into the surface of the paint to reveal the ground. And I just love that. I think it's really fun to do. It's really exciting. And I did that with a tool that I think I pulled. Where did I put it? This guy. This is a, uh, a uh, clay tool. And so it's really good for scratching into the surface of the acrylic paint. Now, I'm going to talk when I'm painting today, I'm going to talk about when to do that because there's a time when you can get the maximum kind of line, scratchy line, and the paint has to be sort of set up a little bit, kind of, kind of sticky, a little bit dry, but not too dry. So that, that's the kind of stuff with acrylic paint. that It just takes a little experience, a little playing around with it to find those little sweet spots that, that are gonna, where you can get the, the technique and the effect that you want. So I'm gonna be using that. I'll be using a couple different brushes. I love using these kind of house painting brushes. I have a lot of these old ones. Um, I love these kind of things. I also, I also love, either bringing all this kind of stuff in. Um, and of course, let's see, this, it's easier to see it like this. Um, my friend Roger Thompson, Roger Thompson Photography, he's taken some beautiful shots of these tools. It's, it's really fun. Okay, so that's kind of it. I guess there's nothing else to do but paint. And I'm going to show you how I get this set up. So I have this empty bucket, and in my empty bucket are going to go my lids. And some of the lids have paint on them, so I don't want to be a little cautious about that so I don't end up with a bunch of messy lids. But usually it works out pretty well. And that one, oh, that one doesn't look so good. That one's been sitting a while. Oh, it's okay. It'll work. All right. And I just get myself all set up. Now, this is an, another thing about doing this method that's kind of great is you can kind of make yourself a real nice limited palette this way. So you only open like, you know, four jars. 
And there you go, you got a really limited palette. I'm not gonna really do that today. I'm gonna let myself have pretty broad range here. Oops, that one's not opening very easily. I'm gonna hand that to you and ask you to do your artist assistant thing. <laughs> I try not to give too many tasks like that. <laughs> Try to do my own artist assistant job. All right, this is a this is a um, interesting uh, jar of paint. This is Matisse. This is a um, brilliant alizarin crimson, and this is this just happens to be a color. I think this little jar is about forty bucks. <laughs> so yeah, you know, there's some colors that are. You know, it's a kind of a special um, paint in that it's very, very chromatic. All right, so let's get a, a little bit of organization here. I'm not gonna go crazy. And that's it. And I'm gonna put my hair back and I'll get, gonna get some paint on here. I think. Okay, all right, I'm gonna put this where I can see it because I really like it. And I'm, I'm even thinking that background color, that pink might be the way I wanna go. And I'm going to also, I'm also, I'm, I'm so crazy about um, phthalo blue. <laughs> I just am, I just, I don't know, there's something about it. And see, I can dip a little bit right right into the to the jars. It's not gonna hurt anything. And I'm gonna come right into some of this, these leaves. I'm gonna skip around where I think I want um, the flowers. This is inside the jar. Now I haven't quite decided what I want to do color-wise with the flowers. I I might I might decide. I, I, I think I want some more color. I don't, I think I, I, I want the pink and the orange, maybe not the yellow. Maybe I'll keep that. I'm going to, there's my, I'm going to make an idea of more of a cast shadow just because I think it's going to look cool. I already like it. There's a little bit of a glare. Is there? Yeah. Let's try to see. Well, it's it's gonna be a little hard because it it does have what it's it's gonna be a little glary because it's it's so now I'm I'm going ahead and getting this on here because I'm what I'm planning on doing is subtracting some of this as the paint dries, but I've got my little drawing under there. I can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, even I have a glare. <laughs> even though I do, so. <laughs> no. 
Now, interesting, so this is very, you know, on the palette, it's very blue. It's mixing with the, with the yellow ochre, so it's looking really green on here. So that's kind of fun. I gotta get some of this in here too. Okay. All right. Now I'm just adding some more water. It's gonna get some drips and all that good stuff in there. Okay, I, I already like it. It's good. It's fun. All right, so now let's see. I'm thinking I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull out some little, little bits. You could. So, um, just a quick question. Yeah. Do you remember the size of that uh, glass palette from Ikea last night? Oh, I don't know. We could measure it, though. The, yeah, the size. I think it's like it, the, your palette, where I get a palette, is two by four. Yeah, this is, four. yeah, my, yeah, this is two by four, so we could, we could measure it, but. I wanted this to go run right off. Um, I, I see students a lot of times hesitating to let elements in their scene run out of the picture frame. And I think that, that that's something that um, is totally good uh, in most cases. What you don't want to do is have elements in the scene appear that you're kind of trying to squash them in to fit them in, to you know, scoochie them in, that's never <laughs> um, very good because that that can look really contrived. So I would avoid that for sure. Okay. Now I'm going to add in some. This is dioxazine purple. Well, this is Payne's gray that I just dipped in there, into here. So, ooh, it's so dark, right? And I want some of that right in here. Um, I already uh, am liking this because I already have it, even though it's really uh, simple, I have a sense of it having um, a dimension, right? I have a sense of it, just a little. Really, really good. Okay, now, now for I, this. This is the part that I is 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 tricky because there's a lot of stuff in here that I like, but I know that I'm going to have to um, sort of sacrifice some of the things that I like to get the thing that I thought I was you know that I'm kind of trying to go for. Um, oh. The scratchy thing. I think some of this paint has set up pretty well, and then I might be able to get some of this in there. See that? That's kind of good, kind of maximum getting that <laughs> to, to, to work. So 
it's a little bit, see if, if it's too wet, it doesn't work. If it's not wet and enough, it, do, it, it doesn't, nothing's gonna happen there either. Acrylic is a nice opportunity for some good finger painting action too. All this kind of good stuff. There's a um, hang on just a sec. Okay. All right. Now I am are you guys trying to get the glare off of it? See, I'm trying to fix trying the glare to, a little bit. Trying yeah. to fix the glare. Let's try oh, that. Oh, good luck with that. Okay, I am going to mix up some of that pink. Now, you guys might be going, oh, what pink? Well, there there is some um, idea here <laughs> that I think I can... Um, I can sell you the pink here. I think so. I'm gonna go ahead and use some white mouse. I also like this. This is buff white, and this is Utrecht, but you can get it a similar kind of white in other brands. I'm gonna show you this. This paint's just really, really strong. And uh, my pink in that is a little oranger. Let's see. Let's see what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna use a palette knife here. And do I want that? That's maybe two. But I need a lot of paint, so that's okay. one this is really pink but it's also got some other stuff going on in it too so let's see so Marla just to clarify mm -hmm. um, your paint's on canvas yeah it's two by two. uh you know that I I think it might be it might be 20 we'll we'll do some measuring of of what we have going on here. And do you prefer um, canvas or panels? I love um, panels as well. Um, panels are fun with acrylics because, um, you know, that, that rigid board is kind of fun to dig into. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate both. Have you guys got a little bit less glare on there? Yeah, a little bit. That's okay. pretty good. Okay, so now this is a lot of paint, right? And I'm going to apply it kind of sticky. See, it's kind of sticky, right? Not, I don't want to add too much water to it. Got to add a, enough water to, to get it moving a little bit, but not too much. So, let's see. Oh, and that's a little wet still right there. But that's okay. I mean, I don't mind that. See, it's mixing with the. Actually, I kind of love that. <laughs> um, we'll we'll just let it do its thing. That's so neat. Okay. 
Now I'm going to get the these leaf leaf shapes here. like that. That's the coolest thing. All right, now I gotta decide what I wanna do up here. I think what I'm going to do, this is where that one rose is, that orange one in, the, in my photo. Ooh, that's so, that's the funnest thing. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here. And this is where there's all this kind of purple stuff in, in the photo. I, 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 I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I don't think I'm going to keep it. this shape to be a little different. Yeah, that's coming along. Okay, so now a little bit thicker layer of paint. Now I, I want a gradation. I want it darker up here, so I'm going to mix something else. Uh, I think I'm going to add. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this. And um, you just prefer to thin with water, but do you ever use any thinning mediums? I don't usually. I try. I actually really like the simplicity of acrylic just for, um, you know, it can be really simple. Uh, just like the same thing with oil, like you could you can make oil painting like really, you know, there's so many different mediums and so many different things to add. Um, I guess, con, you know, the conventional train of thought with acrylics, you don't want to over thin um, because you're, you know, you're taking the, making the, the paint layer to not as durable. Um, so there is some, you know, might, might want to put some thought into that um, a bit, um, but um, uh, oh, overall, I, 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 I keep it pretty simple. But, you know, there's all kinds of different mediums that you could employ. Okay, now I have to look at it. <laughs> I guess it, it might be not glary for you guys, but I it is it's pretty glary for me. It's funny. All right, I'm not I'm not sure what's going to happen up in there, but we'll we'll see. I, I might I might do this. I might do that. 
I might not. And um, you use a lot of different brands uh, of acrylics, just like with pastels. Uh, do, are there any brands of acrylic that you particularly like or anything like that? Or um, Well, more than, uh, you know, no, I wouldn't say that. You know, I'm, I've got Blick Studio. I've got U-Trick out here. There's some um, um, Li Liquitex Golden. The thing I think with uh, paint is that you kind of want to stick with, um, you don't want to be using too much student grade stuff. And you like the, um, and you also stay away from the hues, um, the, the, the paint that says like ultramarine hue. It's cheaper, but it is less, it's less, there's less pigment there. So when um, th there's there's a pretty mighty difference in the paint in terms of that. Okay, what am I thinking here? I want to get that a little bit different. Now I want to decide on the flowers here in the center. I think I'm going to put. I want to. I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, Closer to um, what I've got going on here than than is indicated in the in the photo. So That's cool. And so maybe I'll let it head a little towards orange, but not maybe as much as in the photo. That's definitely not. That's too dull. Let's get something a little bit, a little bit more chromatic. So, and I need. Okay, now here's where having a couple different buckets of water is good. This one's pretty dirty. And so I'll move to this one. Uh, tamp it down a little because I don't want it to be as oh, I ended up with the same thing. That's okay. So um, the acrylics do dry on the palette sometimes, right? Yeah, they do. Now, it's right um, right now in Oregon, it's really, it's really humid. And, um, so it's not drying on that palette very quickly, right? But if it, um, depending on the time of year and the temperature um, in your studio, it, it, it could... <laughs> It could be really dry. Also, if you have a big pool of paint, it doesn't. It takes longer to dry, right? And I also have this. So if I were staying out here and it wasn't so humid, I would be doing this a lot and just getting my paint a little bit moist here like that. There's in the Adventures in Acrylic and Seasons in Acrylic, I um, present some different ways of setting up your palette so that you can keep it keep it moist um, 
Um, there's so there's lots of different ways of doing it that are really really effective. So um, yeah, I definitely go cover all of that kind of thing stuff when. Well, when we know, filmed, I think it was seasons in acrylic. It, remember, it was like a hundred degrees out. Yeah. And we were turning the right. air conditioner on, and then when we were filming, we turned the air conditioner off. Yeah. That, yeah. That yeah. That's right. Pretty we wild. did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. That's right. We did. So I'm switching up the colors here just because I think those are that's a little bit um, better for the composition. And just just kind of wanting a, a more limited palette palette look. I kind of like that one. All right, so now I'm going to get another layer of that background in. And, you know, it's funny, our um, painters, uh, this is the same for me in oil. Uh, I have all these brushes, but I wind up only using a couple. <laughs> and that's, that's so, um, yeah, it's kind of the way it goes. So this guy's not going to get done today, but I think it gives you a really good idea of like some directions that you can head. I'm 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 actually thinking that I I want to go back over this with an, another layer of blue. Maybe I'll get there because I'm I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I like how the shadow, the cast shadow is looking. I like how that's looking. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of rethinking the flowers a little bit. What's this? Is this dry? No, it's not dry. I'm kind of wanting it to be even more limited. So I'm going to scrub out that supposedly orange one. And that's what's also cool about acrylic. So simple. And I'm going to put it in. Here's my phthalo. I'm going to put it in like this. Yeah, so much better. I get to really play with that edge there. I'm going to let that dry and then I can scratch back into that really nicely. So I'm going to get the best of both worlds. I'm going to get that soft edge. And then I'm going to get some line. And that's, that's going to be really cool. All right. Do we have no questions today? Well, one question um, is interesting. Um, why didn't you just paint the canvas blue and then work from that with the flowers, etc.? 
um, because there's so much blue showing through, I, see, I assume. Because I wanted that gold, the, the, this, I wanted to be able to scratch back in. And I, I also, you know, anytime you're, you can, um, it, it's, it just adds a richness to the painting that I, I wouldn't be able to get any other way. The, the layers that you can, like, dip into those layers and go, you know, go back and forth between the layers. Um, and I, I, I have blue on here, but I also have green because it's interacted with that gold. So, you know, I got, I got a twofer. I got the, you know, I got green and blue and, you know, well, threefer. I got gold, all of that by um, applying it the way it did. So, yeah, there's a, there's a little method to that madness, a little bit. I, I think acrylic does the layering so well uh, and in such a dynamic way. Um, it's, it's pretty neat. So let's see here. Let's get. And what's the most efficient way to get the dry paint off your can off your palette? Oh, it's so easy. I'll show you. Um, um, if it's if it's. Um, I don't know if I've got anything that's super dry here. You got this, you got this, and you just let that you let that sit up for a minute. If it just sits up for, you know, I don't know, like 30 seconds or something, it kind of gets it gets crinkly, it gets that crinkly thing, and then you just boom, just it just comes right up. It's super easy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, really easy cleanup. And it's, you know, unlike oils, you, you don't have to, that chemical, you don't have to worry about the chemicals. Um, you know, I personally don't mind the Gamsol. It's odorless mineral spirits in, in, in the oils. It's, you know, I kind of like those smells because I kind of grew up with it. But um, I know for some people it's just not, not a good, not good. So, so I'm just going to do a little bit more here, here and there. This is a pretty fun painting, so I, I would, this would be something I would, I'd try to finish. Tamp that down a little bit. But you can say a lot with not a lot, <laughs> and that's, I love that. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave the other ones alone. I'll rough it up a little bit. Um, now I'm going to go back to the background because to me, uh, the other thing about acrylic is sort of this inner the interplay of the background and the and the foreground and the the layers is really important to me. So um, here's a question: mm -hmm. Have you had any trouble with paint starting to pull off the canvas as you're going over a color? Pull off the canvas. In what? Well, you know, um, actually, it just came to mind. It could be the quality of the canvas. Because remember when we had that cheap canvas? Yeah. And it just wasn't. It wasn't grabbing the canvas. Yeah. So it could be a materials issue. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to kind of know exactly what what was going on there. I think. Because it, because acrylic is plastic, you know, bottom line, right? So 
there's it has these these some um, quality of, of plastic. So um, you do have to make sure you it's um, uh, that it's ad adhering that you've got the right kind of. Um, um, uh, ground. Let's see, I want a little bit of trying to make some green. Uh, so, um, do you know who asked the question about canvas, uh, about acrylic pulling off, said they had the problem with clayboard. Oh, clayboard. It wasn't adhering to clayboard very well. Interesting. Yeah. I usually have pretty good luck with clayboard. Um, hmm. Was it thin, thin paint or thick paint, I wonder? Hmm. Also, um, where do you pour the dirty water? Down the drain. Yeah, down the drain. Yeah, because um, don't have too many options there. You know the, you know there's so, um, you know there. Uh, you know I suppose. In, in terms of environmental, um, trying to be a good steward of when we're painting, it, it, it is really difficult because, um, you know, you could look at oils. Well, even though oils has um, more, you know, you're using more chemicals. With oils, there are things that you can do to um, dispose of it. You can, um, you know, I eventually take my, the, you know, I, I, I do this whole thing where I take the, the Gamsol and I let it um, solidify and then those jar and I put it into a series of jars and then the final, the final end product gets taken to um, the um, metro and disposed of like old paint. So you could say in some sense that that's more environmentally friendly than putting that down the drain, um, so uh, you know, uh, it's all it's all kind of hard. So I just try, I, I I try to do my best with everything and minimize the the impact that I have um, from being a painter because there is there's definitely some impact. Okay, guys, I'm not going to finish this today because I right, I'm kind of at a at a place where um, it's one o'clock and I've got to wait for some of this to dry. And my idea right now would be to, to put another dark grady, a darker gradation up here. And, and so that this gets to all be kind of dark, darker here. And then it's gonna pull my, the interest to this area because this is my, the area that I'm most concerned with. I probably these little sprays out here keep them pretty simple. Maybe get in there with some more line and some more scratching in to the, to the background for what's going on in here. But I really, I love the, the direction in here. I love the, 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 the paint, the brush strokes, right? Like right in here that are describing the leaf surface, the negative painting. This, this is, I think, really uh, neat. Some of these edge things are really fun. Um, and so I just have to play around with it some more to really to to get it to where I want it. But I like it a lot, and you know I'm thinking it does have um, some of the qualities of this one. Um, if I not, I want to just put yeah. that right in front here. So I'll, yeah, I'll, just, I'll actually back up a little bit here, what, so we uh, can see both of them at the yeah. same time there. Yeah. There we go. I mean, this is. Um, Kind of a simple little painting. This one's got a little bit more complexity in terms of the detail, I guess. But yeah. yeah. 
Well, I hope you had fun today. I hope maybe some of you got to paint along or, or um, you know, I don't know. Um, but um, be sure to check out the sale. Um, it's Seasons in Acrylic and Adventures in Acrylic. And um, just for uh, until the 21st, our sale. So check it out. They're both really interesting and, and fun workshops. So, yeah, lots of information on the website about both of those. Okay, we'll see you next week. I'm not sure. Or yeah, I'm ugh, not sure. Are we taking? Are we? T I'm not sure if we're taking next week off. We'll let you know. We'll let you know if we'll be back next week or not. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend.